Hey, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. And today I'm gonna to address a very common car issue where you get in, you stick your key in the ignition and turn it, and you just get a bunch of clicking or the engine barely turns over, struggles to start. And when that happens, it's 95% of the time gonna be one of three things. It's gonna be your starter or your alternator or your battery and the wiring associated. Today I've got a 2010 Honda Odyssey. Uh, the owner just put a new battery in a year ago, but they're saying that they're having a hard time starting it. Sometimes it won't start at all. And so we're gonna walk through the diagnostic steps to figure out what's going on. So one thing you're gonna need to test your alternator and battery is gonna be a basic multimeter. And uh, just something that can read DC volts and amps. And you probably pick one of these up for cheap, 20 bucks maybe. I'll put a link to one in the description. So the way this works is when the car is running, the alternator is charging your battery. And then when the car is off, your battery powers the starter in order to get your car running again. Um, we want to do the process of elimination on these three things, and I'm going to start with the starter. So we're going to try to turn it over, and if we can get it to crank, uh, at least know that the starter is working, we'll eliminate that part. Now there are some obvious clues that will happen that will point to a problem, such as the battery light coming on your dash, which is pointing to an alternator, or that chattering sound when you try to start the car, which usually points to a bad battery. But you're gonna to wanna to go through the full diagnostic process to really nail down what the problem is. If your starter is bad, most likely all you're gonna hear when you turn the key is a single click or maybe nothing at all. When I tried to start this car, I heard it struggling to turn over, but it was turning over. So I know the starter was engaging and it's probably not the problem. It's gotta be something else. Now, if you were getting the symptoms of a bad starter, it's not necessarily conclusive. So I would still go ahead and check your alternator and your battery before you go out and buy something that you don't really need. Before I get too involved in the process, I always check my terminals to make sure they're nice and tight. Because if they spin or they're loose at all, that'll throw in a whole bunch of other symptoms that can be really confusing. So make sure your terminals are nice and tight. The next issue that we want to diagnose is the alternator. In order to do that, I have to have the car running. So because I wasn't able to get it running before, I'm gonna have to jump start it. You can use another car with jumper cables or one of these little boxes with a jumper pack. She started right up when being jumped. So that's another way I know that most likely my starter is okay. When connected to another battery source, it started right up fine. Now I just need to figure out, is it the battery that's the problem? or is it the alternator that's supposed to be charging the battery the problem? Now we're gonna check the alternator. In order to do that, you need your multimeter set to DC volts. I'm gonna put my red lead on the positive terminal, black lead on the negative, and I'm getting 14 volts. At idle, a properly functioning alternator should give you somewhere around 13 and a half to 14 volts. If it's lower than that, especially if it's down around 13 or under 13, you know you have a failing alternator, which is not gonna charge your battery enough to start the car later on. But because this is at 14, I know this alternator is good. So we've narrowed it down to a battery problem. There's a couple reasons why that could be. The main and most obvious one is how old the battery is. A good battery should last three or four years. Um, the owner said this one was a year and a half, so it should be fine but let's double check. They have a, a sticker with a date on it. Uh, some batteries have this little chart where you can scratch off the date when you buy the battery. Um, so they are right, it's a little over a year old, should be fine. The next thing I'm gonna check on this battery is the cables that come into the terminals. And I'm gonna check if there's broken wires or if they're loose. And I can see a bunch of this white powdery stuff in here, also down in, inside. So there is quite a bit of corrosion. And if that builds up enough, it'll break connectivity to this terminal and you'll get problems. So I'm probably gonna wanna clean that up. Checking on the other side, making sure these wires are good and solid, not fraying or breaking. Just as a side note, you may have heard about the old trick where you disconnect one of your terminals while the car is running, pull it off, and if the car stays running, your alternator's okay. That's fine, but I don't think that gives you a good indication as whether your alternator is on its way out or not. It just tells you if it's really bad. This is a much more accurate way to tell the condition of your alternator. 
Last thing we're going to do is check the battery system for parasitic draw, which basically means we're going to make sure nothing is drawing power from the battery after the vehicle has been shut off. Before you do this test, uh, you want to make sure that the car has been off for about 15 minutes so that all the systems are fully shut down. Right, so first I'm going to set up my meter. I'm going to go to DC amps and then I'm going to flip my uh, red wire over to the amps port. And then I'm going to go ahead and loosen the terminal on the positive. You can do positive or negative, it doesn't really matter. Before I disconnect it, uh, I'm going to hook this up. If you have any alligator clips, it makes it a lot easier. You don't need as many hands. Uh, but essentially, you want to put one lead on the wire and one lead on the post so that when you separate it, the connection stays holding through the meter. So I'm going to clip it onto here. And then I'm going to stick it underneath onto the post so that now I'll be able to move this away, but it's still connected. So you can see my meter is showing 0 0.01 amps, which is 10 milliamps. Uh, anything under 50 milliamps is acceptable. So this is an acceptable parasitic draw and it's not the problem the battery's having. So we've traced the hard start problems of this car back to the battery. And uh, it's a little odd because it's only a little over a year old, but there's a few reasons that can happen. One of which is it's just a bad battery. That happens. Um, the other is maybe the owner killed the battery a lot, leaving the headlights on, dome light on. Um, I don't know, but batteries can't handle that too many times before they become permanently damaged and can't hold the same amount of charge as before. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these terminals I'm going to put the battery on a trickle charge overnight, get it all charged up, and hand it back to them and see if it made a difference. If not, I'm pretty sure they're going to need a new battery. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.